Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am your solo commentator forever and always, Michael Anthony. Welcome to PWR episode 8. It's sure to be a good wrestling night tonight, ladies and gentlemen, as we are going to bring to you such matches as Chase Dunn versus Bash Corvair. Chase Dunn at a loss of momentum ever since his loss at New Beginning in the PWR Interpromotional Fatal 4-Way Ladder Match. He's looking to try to pick up that momentum like he did last episode against Ethan Moda, just this time against Bash Corvair. Hopefully, he can come up victorious. And then we are also bringing to you Robert Martyr addressing the PWR Interpromotional title scene. He is going to address who he is facing at Thunderstruck, who he thinks he is worthy, or if it's going to be an open challenge, we'll see what he has to say later on in the night after Chase Dunn and Bash Corvair have their match. And then after that, we have Max Harleton competing yet again, and he is facing one of the longest standing veterans in this business, Dan Backslide. I'm sure that's going to be a really entertaining technical bout Make sure to look out for that one later in the night. And speaking of looking out, Mark Tamor picking a bone with Dead Zone alongside Killian Walker. Tag team champion, one of our tag team champions, is going up against Dead Zone tonight. And it's terrifying of an idea to see this creep versus this monster. That is also something to be sure to look out for later tonight. And then our main event of the evening is our first Proving Grounds match that Rob Kamen would announce that he is going to have every episode. Is that he's going to have Proving Grounds matches. And every single time somebody faces him and beats him, the next episode, they face him for the World Championship. And tonight, we are getting Wayne Watson versus Rob Kamen. If Wayne wins... Next episode, he's facing him for the world title. Big opportunity for one half of the Rebel Society. That is the card for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take you to the ring now for our first match of the night. Katsuki Hiro going one-on-one -on -one with the Concussion King, the Lido Deck. Now here comes out one of the most dangerous strikers in Japanese wrestling, Katsuki Hiro. The last time we saw him, he was facing Max Harleton in his debut match. And unfortunately, Max Harleton came up victorious over Katsuki Hiro. Unfortunately for Katsuki Hiro, at least. And now he's looking to pick up momentum yet again after a loss. Katsuki Hiro's only match he has won in PWR is against Ethan Moda. He has had an unfortunate spell of losses against Robert Martyr, to be particular. Now he's looking to pick up that momentum tonight against possibly an equally as dangerous striker, the Lido Deck. Now here comes out... The Concussion King, the Lido Deck. Last time we saw him was at New Beginning four weeks ago. He faced Dead Zone for the number one contendership. Something that Mort Tamor actually called out Lido for being a fool for doing when he said that he's trying to drive Dead Zone away from the championship. But I figure Lido thought that since he knew Dead Zone so well, he could possibly defeat him and stop him, but unfortunately, that was not the case. And Dead Zone is still undefeated and now the number one contender. Now a lot of people have to question, is Leto to blame for this? Now, unfortunately, I, I have to agree with Mort Tamor. It's absolutely Leto's fault. I think it was a little bit hot-headed of him to just go guns blazing at dead zone challenging him for the number one contendership now anthony paul of course allowed it because they're both qualified enough for it 
but now we are facing something quite dangerous, and that's Dead Zone possibly getting the world title in the future, and that would be at Thunderstruck. Well, luckily it seems like a good portion of the roster is joining Leto in the effort to stop Dead Zone. But for now, Leto has to focus on his own career. Ring the bell as he goes up against Katsuki Hiro. Both of these men could use a win tonight as neither of them have picked up a win in quite a few weeks. Got a little wrist lock here from Katsuki Hiro. Some good chain wrestling between these two as he trips the leg on Leto. Mocking Leto a little bit, trying to get into his head. Now Leto with a headlock, but Katsuki Hiro bounces him off the ropes, drop down, leapfrog, and oh jeez! Katsuki Hiro, very well known for his chopping ability, just threw two chops to the chest of Leto. However, Leto seems to just be angry now as Katsuki was just in a slap fight with him. Now he's backing him up into the corner. Oh, big chop again makes him sit down. Katsuki Hiro just telling Leto just who he is. He's washing the face a little bit. Maybe trying to make the mask obscure his vision with another running face wash in the corner. Now he goes for the cover. Kick out right at two. Really early in the match, I don't think you can take down Leto so easy. Oh, another chop from Katsuki Hiro to the chest of the Leto deck. Leto does not have a whole lot of muscle in his chest, so it's kind of hard for him to just absorb those strikes. As he's going for an overhand, but Leto blocks it. He puts him in the corner, and look at this, Leto's unloading on Katsuki Hiro. I think he's a little angry at him, and oh my god! That wasn't just a running face wash, that was just a straight up big boot to the face. You could hear the slap against Katsuki's face. It's like he slapped him with his foot. And, oh jeez! Big drop kick square to the back of the neck of Katsuki Hiro. I think Katsuki Hiro did the mistake of angering the Leto deck when Leto's not exactly in the right mindset right now. Oh no, no, not the knock again! Oh jeez! Leto's not holding anything back. Usually he goes for the head later on in the match, but it's early yet, and he's already bashing in Katsuki Hiro's head with his knees. Good lord, he's not stopping. Jesus Christ, Leto, just put him down. Oh Jesus! He's just doing it over and over again and oh god if Katsuki Hiro isn't already knocked out <laughs> I think he's about to be already Katsuki Hiro stunned concussion buster Leto making quick work surprisingly of the Japanese striker as he has just won the match Leto is certainly not in a good mood right now, if you couldn't tell. He did not want to waste his time with that match. I think he has something else on his agenda. Of course, he's going to pander to the crowd first, telling them all that he is the, un the quote-unquote, THE king. not exactly what it looks like in New Beginning, though. It looks like he was on the other end of that beating. I think uh, somebody's getting him a microphone right now. I think Leto has a few words to say, actually. <sighs> Alright. Now that Katsuki Hiro has been taken care of and put out of the way. I need to address a little something right now. 
Mort Tamor, that, that little creepy asshole, decided to point out that I made a mistake at New Beginning by challenging Dead Zone for the number one contendership for the world title, even though I said, I know that's what he's here for. And I admit it. I made a mistake, but it's more than that. To be honest, I've been screwed over so many times in my career. I've had to wait so long. I had to be denied opportunities over and over again. And I'm tired. I'm tired of waiting. So challenging Dead Zone for the number one contendership wasn't just to get him away from it. It was to get me towards the PWR World Championship. So obviously, this is a little personal to me. But besides that, Dead Zone is a threat, not just to my opportunity at getting the World Championship, but a threat to the whole promotion's chance at getting the whole championship. So, if you excuse me, I'm going to go backstage right now and have a little talk with Anthony Paul, because I have a few things to tell you about Dead Zone. Oh, finally, Anthony Paul. Maybe he's getting some answers towards just what Dead Zone is or what he's here for. Now, Lido revealing that his his goal here is maybe a little bit selfish, but at the very least, we're getting some answers to why Dead Zone is so dangerous to this promotion. So we'll get some word on that soon in the night. Uh, I will fill you in on that later tonight on what he has told Anthony Paul. But right now, let's take you to the second match of the night. Chase Dunn, also another person looking to pick back up his momentum with some wins. He is going to face Bash Corvair. Let's take you to the ring for that right now. Now out comes Bash, Bash, Bash Corvair. Last we saw him, he faced Robert Martyr, actually on the episode before New Beginning. Had quite a killer, hard-hitting match of just pure wrestling. However, similarly to Ethan Moda, he has yet to win a match. Except Ethan Moda won his match against Chase Dunn last episode. Now will Bash Corvair continue the similarities with Ethan Moda by putting down Chase Dunn tonight? Thus picking up his own momentum at the expense of Chase Dunn. Now I like to use the word momentum when referring to wins and losses quite a lot in PWR because if there's one thing that matters the most in this promotion it is your win and loss record and unfortunately Chase is on the down on the down spiral right now as he was the one who got knocked down before Robert got the brief the uh the championship excuse me in the ladder match at New Beginning eating a Cactus Crippler. And then last episode, he lost against Ethan Moda, someone who is infamously known for having a losing streak in PWR. Now he's facing another person who has yet to have won any matches here. But Chase has said that he doesn't want to wrestle this match, that he is recovering from back injuries however that does not excuse it as Robert defended his title right after winning the match now 
matter how much you like to whine, you still have to wrestle, unless you are uncleared by the doctors. And Chase is still cleared to wrestle as we ring the bell. Bash Corvair and Chase Dunn staring down a little bit. Chase getting out of the ring right off the bat. Just showing he does not want to wrestle this match as he's he's running up the ramp right now. He's just being an absolute coward and I dislike it. And oh jeez, Bash Corvair caught back with him. Bash Corvair, anything but a coward does not back down from a fight and that's what he wants right now. He wants a good wrestling match with Chase Dunn. Now personally, I was impressed with Chase in the match at New Beginning. And with his match with the Lido deck a few episodes before that. And, oh geez, big scoop slam from Bash Corvair. Right on the KT taped back of Chase Dunn. Now I was quite, I was quite impressed with Chase Dunn before, but seeing Chase revert back to his cowardly deeds is quite disappointing to see. Because Chase can be a really good wrestler when he wants to be, but when he has an excuse, he will use it. And look at this Chase just unloading a Bash Corvair. Throwing him over the top. Trying to avoid any type of contact with him. The Bash Corvair's... Oh jeez, just staying on Chase Dunn. As he just socked him in the face with that punch. Nice Gaman Fireman's carry position. What's he looking to do in... Oh jeez, also targeting the neck. You can see that Bash Corvair also watched that match. Kick out by Chase Dunn. You can see that Bash Corvair actually paid attention to the new beginning match because even though there is the big target on Chase's back with the KT tape, his neck took a lot of damage as he took a Brain Buster and a Cactus Crippler. Two finishers of Robert Martyr and as you can see here with this beast bite uh, submission he's wrenching on that neck right now trying to make him give up but Chase just gets out of it. Oh forearm by Chase Dunn and another backing Bash Corvair up a bit. Chase trying to get in any offense he can but Bash is just on it. Look at this. Oh, oh geez Falcon Arrow slam. Crowd definitely likes Bash Corvair much more than Chase Dunn. Chase being the headlock god. Oh, jeez. Pop-up cutter right in the middle of the ring. Goes for the cover. And oh, kick out at two and a half. As I was saying, Chase Dunn being the headlock god, he likes to piss off the crowd. He likes to bore them in his matches. So clearly, they would like, oh geez, the pure wrestler, Bash Corvair much more. As he's clobbering him right now with these lariats. Bash Corvair, just as known for his lariats as Katsuki Hero is known for his chops as he, oh geez, running clothesline, takes down Chase Dunn. And oh, close kick out there by Chase Dunn. Ash Corvair has to wonder what to do next, and oh, he's going back to the back and neck. Oh, geez, just really targeting that back. It's an easy target, as the KT tape points it out so much. Ash Corvair is just unloading on him right now with all these moves. Oh, dunk wrench, sit out power bomb. All that damage going into the injured back of Chase Dunn. Weakening his support system. Could allow Bash Corvair to go for anything right now. He's going for a Falcon Arrow again. And... Oh, jeez! Chase Dunn reversed it with a Daughter Stunner. His retired finisher. Can he get him with it? No! Oh, kick out by Bash Corvair. Surprise reversal by Chase Dunn there. Pulling out the Dunner Stunner. Maybe a little bit of desperation here, as he really does need the victory. Now 
look at this clothesline and a back elbow. He puts him in the corner, but no, he reverses it and dodges Bash Corvair there. Oh, look at this high flying ability from Chase Dunn. Don't see it very often as he's a brawler. He goes for the cover off the Hurricane Rana. But no, look at this. Bash Corvair gets the rope break. Much too close. Good ring awareness by Bash Corvair. Now Chase, what could he be looking to follow up with? Puts him against the ropes. Now he's got Bash Corvair down. Oh, this looks very dangerous. Oh, jeez. Knee drop to the back of Bash Corvair's neck. Maybe softening him up a bit for the God's plan. Oh, jeez. Whipped into the, into the barricade there. On the outside, much more dangerous place. Back elbow pushes Bash Corvair back. And look at this. He's picking up the 270-pounder. But look at that. His back just gave out from trying to lift Bash Corvair. As his back is weakened and Bash has been, pun unintended, bashing on it right now. Schoolboy powerbomb goes for the cover. One, two. Oh, kick out by Chase Dunn. He's beckoning for him to get up. Maybe he's looking for his finisher and that's a swinging jawbreaker from a fireman's carry. As he's swinging him around right now, setting him up for it, but Chase is getting out of it with these elbow strikes. Oh, look at this. God's plan. Oh, no. Spin out power bomb. Lands him hard on his back. And the ref calling for a slight stoppage for a second, trying to check if Chase can continue right now. But I don't think that quite matters because Bash Corvair is in sublime position to end this match right now. And that is what he's looking for. He's got him in the fireman's carry. And a big swinging jawbreaker. That is his finisher. Goes for the cover. One, two, three. And just like Ethan Moda, Bash Corvair picks up his own momentum at the expense of Chase Dunn's. Chase groggy right now and he's getting up. He looks severely disappointed right now taking some time to reflect as bash corvair is soaking in the adulation from the crowd proud of bash corvair but chase i think chase is contemplating on leaving impressive victory for bash corvair All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was an impressive match from Bash Corvair. Good outing from Chase Dunn, even though it seems like the back injuries are stacking up for him right now. Up next, we're going to take you to the ring for Robert Martyr, as he is going to address the Hot on Fire Interpromotional Contendership right now. You can see people like Orion James Max Harleton, Heraldry, for God's sake, go up against Robert Martyr, and Robert is going to address that right now for whose opponent is going to be at Thunderstruck. And out comes Robert Martyr, our proud interpromotional champion who is on absolute fire right now. This young, bitter man, as I like to say every single time I see him come out on screen, easily one of the most dangerous wrestlers in the world, had two killer matches as of the past two episodes that he came out victorious. On New Beginning, he won the Interpromotional Championship in a fatal four-way ladder match against three of the greatest wrestlers on our roster. And then just last episode, he already defended the title against Ryan Gonzalez, one of our youngest and most talented wrestlers. And he still came out victorious with a different finisher. 
Every single match he has won in PWR, he's used a different finisher. He is just an insanely impressive wrestler. And an impressive talker too. As we're going to get him a microphone right now. And he is going to address the interpromotional title scene for Thunderstruck. And honestly, I think he could put on an amazing match with no matter who is going to face him. You know, exactly one month ago, I faced three other men in the most dangerous match in PWR history, and I came out on top. I stared death in the face, and I still came out on top. Ever since day one, Ever since the first time I ever stepped in a ring at age 14 years old, I told myself that this was going to be my life, and quite frankly it is. You know, PWR, PWR is something special. People want to ridicule PWR. People want to take this promotion that I've single-handedly built up, that I've taken to the roof, and now everyone in professional wrestling is talking about. They want to throw it to the ground. They want to ruin what I'm building, and I'm not going to let that happen because I'm going to break barriers. Because the wrestler... Because the last of a dying breed, because the deadbeat devil, the wolf in sheep's skin is going to take something to a place that nobody ever thought. And I'm going to start by opening a challenge to anyone in PWR or outside of PWR. I don't care if you're from Future. I don't care if you're from True One Pro. I don't care if you're from UCW. I don't care if you're from Freedom Pro. I don't care if you're from BDG or you're from Legend because Robert Martyr is gonna make a challenge right here to anybody. And I mean anybody. Victoria, whoever. So you come out right now and you face me. You face the man that's gonna take this company to another level, and you come out right now. Come on! Anybody that dares to touch what I built, anybody that dares to touch what my legacy is gonna be at the end of the day, come out right now. Because anybody, anybody that has the slightest idea that they can out-wrestle me, that they can outstrike me, that they can break my mental state is done. Everybody that told me when I was a little baby boy, when a little baby martyr was being told every night and day that he couldn't do it, that he was nothing in this world. And I'm gonna prove, and I'm gonna show everyone that ever said that I was nothing. I'm gonna show that this deadbeat, that this motherfucker of a wrestler is gonna prove and show why he's the top of the world in the wrestling business. So get your ass out here. Jesus Christ, some scary words from Robert Martyr. But he's issued an open challenge. Who's answering it right now? That theme song sounds very familiar, and that's why it's Everett Constantinelli. Without hesitation, Robert already has somebody answering his open challenge. And it is the owner of Conquer Victoria, Everett Constanelli. This is the first time we're seeing Constanelli on PWR television. This is a big surprise here. This is potentially big if Everett Constanelli is coming out here to accept the challenge right now for Thunderstruck. These two very personal against each other which is why it's even more surprising to see them face to face right now look at that intense stare from the deadbeat devil Robert 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 Robbie my man how have you been? The last time I saw you, Jay Williams, 
used you as a training dummy and made you go to school twice. And here you are, a boy amongst men, holding the PWR into promotional championship. Everybody give this man a round of applause, huh? There's only one thing, Rob. And I regret to inform you of this, but um, uh, that doesn't excuse the fact that you're a lousy excuse of a man. And most importantly, Robert, it doesn't excuse the fact that you're a bastard. Now granted, you've come a long way, haven't you? You went from being the kid that got slapped by MK1 to being a training dummy for Jay Williams to now carrying this company on your back. Now granted, there's not a lot of things that are good in this company. The general manager is balding. The roster is filled with has-beens, wannabes, or simply people that hate me. And most of all, there's nothing here but fake promises and broken dreams. You have a world champion who fights newcomers instead of actual talent. You have a tag division that really, really just lacks. It's lackluster. We have a bastard running the Interpromotional Championship. And this place is just a mess compared to Vitori. It's just a mess. However, you're probably wondering why I'm out here today. And it's quite simple. You see, Robbie, my good man, you have something I got. The PWR Interpromotional Championship. Now, I know your general manager got mad for um, well, Orion James trying to pick his spot. But let me make myself clear. I'm not Orion James. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be that geek. Especially these days after Manifesto. But regardless, regardless, let me, let me shed some compassion to you. I want to express my dearest condolences. Because I am going to take your championship. I don't need Micah. I don't need Cassius. And I don't need anybody to know that I can beat you. So, at whatever this next pay-per-view of PWR is, why don't we set up the match? The Bastard versus the Essence. One-on-one. -on -one. No interference. Just your championship versus me. Do you have a deal? Well, Constantinelli just laid it out all in front of us right now why this is so personal. He just asked if Robert has a deal with him to face him at Thunderstruck for the interpromotional title. Well, frankly, I don't really think you need to ask Robert if he's okay with it. Has He said he's open to facing anybody, and I'm sure he would love to face Everett Constantinelli right now. But in any case, Constantinelli offering the handshake. And, oh no, he just denied Robert. And, oh jeez! What a slap from Robert. Just absolute disrespect from Constantinelli. And, oh jeez. Oh god! Low blow from Everett Constantinelli. What an underhanded move. You can tell just how personal this is. 
Oh, Consinelli! Oh, jeez, punt kick! From Constantelli. And just picking apart our interpromotional champion. Uh, put that title down. This despicable human being is holding our promotion's hottest title right now. Now you've got to wonder, and this is a scary scene. Could this be what we're seeing at Thunderstruck? When Constantinelli faces Robert Martyr for that title. The crowd obviously isn't too akin to that. All right, well, we're back from that confrontation, ladies and gentlemen. How dare Everett Constantinelli does that to our interpromotional champion? Such blatant disrespect, not just to Robert, but to our promotion to just come out of nowhere and just low blow, then punt our interpromotional champion. Nevertheless, speaking of dastardly, out comes the coward bully cat and thief. Dan Backslide. Dan has been at an unfortunate loss of his winning ability. He has not won a single match in PWR. And as of late, he has been losing matches in minutes. But that's because he's mostly been doing tag team wrestling with another veteran in the promotion, Jason Vance. Now we're seeing him back in singles action tonight facing another big name in this community, and that is the voice of the Dreamers, Max Harleton. Now here comes out Max Harlton, big name in this community. Last time we saw him in PWR, he debuted against Katsuki Hero victoriously. And the last time we saw him in general was at Manifesto, where he came out victorious against Orion James, somebody who was actually facing our first world champion at New Beginning for the inaugural championship. So safe to say Max Harlton is on top of the world right now. And he has so much momentum that Anthony Paul is considering him for the interpromotional contendership. There we go. Ring the bell. Little stare off between these two. Collar elbow tie up. Now it will be really interesting to see if Max Harlton can get himself into the interpromotional title picture. As a lot of you may know from Twitter posts, Orion James is trying to get his way at the interpromotional title. Look at this. Oh, not a clean break at all as Dan Backslide slaps Max Harlton. Going to go into collar elbow tie up. Now Anthony Paul said F. Orion James he can gain enough momentum before Thunderstruck. He could face any number of people for the interpromotional contendership. And one of those people, oh geez, big chop from Max Harlton. And one of those people that Anthony Paul said he could possibly face is Max Harlton. And that would be incredibly interesting to see a manifesto rematch at Thunderstruck. Big Japanese arm drag from Max Harlton onto Dan Backslide. Snap Mare and he goes for a cover. Kick out one by Dan Backslide. Oh, 
Look at this. He's going into a working hold. Abdominal stretch here onto the older veteran. Max Harlton, considerably young, facing Dan Backslide, who is considerably old. Now look at this. Smart from Dan Backslide, elbowing the knee with a knee brace. Of course, that knee has been worn down over the years that Max Harlton has been wrestling, which is why he wears the knee brace from repeated injuries to that knee. I'm sure Dan Backslide being the technical bravado that he is sees that as a big target. Well, Max Harlton gets out. Big overhand chop and another one. Oh, slap to the face. Max Harlton known for his chops much like the person he debuted against and oh another chop and another one just absolutely paint brushing Dan Backslide's shrivelly chest jeez big forearm knocks down Dan Backslide and calls for another chop and another one stumbles Dan and another forearm backs him into the ropes Irish whip by Max Harlton and oh big leg lariat right, goes for the cover kick out by Dan Backslide now he's getting him up and oh geez another chop takes down Dan Backslide you can just hear the pain that Dan Backslide is in. Now he puts him into the corner. Oh, another chop again and again. Just, oh geez. Machine gun chops, classic Harlton here. Oh, and another, and he's gonna follow up with a jab. And oh, no, Dan Backslide dodges it. Getting out of harm's way, I think Dan has had enough chops for today. And, oh, he's asking for forgiveness from Max Harlton, and, oh, geez, he's not going to get that hospitality. The crowd quite amused with Dan Backslide's cowardness. Oh, he's beckoning for him to get up. Max Harlton, known to be quite the high flyer, springboard crossbody. Now he goes for the cover. And, oh, kicks out right at two and three quarters. Now Dan Backslide getting him back up. Now the front face lock turns him around. Puts him in the corner again. Max Halton calling for a chop. Oh, jeez! Sickening overhand chop. Asking the crowd to be quiet so I could hear it all the way back here. And Dan Backslide quite comically fell flat on his face from it. And Max Halton looking for signature Halton move. Hip splash in the corner, misses. Big Russian leg sweep. Hooking that leg with the knee brace. Now speaking of that leg, as I said, Dan Backslide is going after it. Being the technical virtuoso that he is. Just wearing down Max Halton right there as he was hooking the nose out of the ref's side. And look at this, he's going for a triangle. He's got locked in tight. Dan Backslide usually likes to target the arms to soften him up for his two finishers. The backslide driver or the backslide roll up or the octopus stretch. More chops from Max Halton, and look at this, he's looking to finish the machine gun chops he was doing earlier. And, oh, geez, again and again and again, and there's the jab. Gotta go easy on this man, you don't know when Dan Backslide could have a heart attack. As you just did that again, and oh! Big, leaping, vertical senton. Goes for the cover. Kick out by Dan Backslide at two. 
Dan absorbing a lot more punishment than he usually does in matches. However, for his past two matches, he's faced D.I.E. and Dead Zone. And, oh, big drop kick by Max Harlton. He's looking for a headlock here. Showing off to Dan Backslide, maybe mocking him a little bit. As Max knows, he's in firm control of this match, which is rare to get on Dan Backslide. Form by Max Harlton, and look at this. Stunner here. Takes Dan to the outside. He's in sublime position. Max Harlton hyping up the crowd. And a big vaulting press over the top rope. No hands. Max Harlton taking down Dan Backslide. Oh, he's gone by the back of the neck. Puts him against the apron and I know it's coming. Big drop kick into the apron. Softening the back of Dan Backslide. Now he gets in the ring. He goes for the cover off of that big drop kick. And oh, kick out by Dan Backslide. Max Harlton, what could he be looking for next? I think he's looking for a running blockbuster. The setup to one of his finishers, and he hits it. And as I said, he's going up to the top for one of his finishers. He is set up sublime for the maximum risk moonsault. And, oh geez! Dan Backslide put up his knees perfectly in time to catch Max Harlton. Look at this underhook arm drag. Impressive combo by Dan Backslide drop kicking that knee brace covered knee. Max Harlton intelligently rolling out of the ring to get out of harm's way though. But Dan Backslide is still on it. Irish whipping him along the outside to do more damage on him. Now he's dragging him by the neck. He's putting him in the ring. Oh no. Don't do this. Oh god! Chop to the throat. He goes for the cover. Kick out by Max Harlton. Underhanded dastardly move. That won't get you a pin off of that move. But sure as hell going to hurt. Now Dan backslide. You don't really ever see this from him, but he's going up to the top. He's beckoning for Halton to get up. The crowd is hyping him up. And, oh, he just clotheslines him in the back of the head anyway. Damn backslide, eccentric character going for the cover. Kick out by Max Halton. Dan, what could he be looking to do? Catching his breath a little bit in the corner. Oh, I think he's going for the arm now. In fact, he's going for the hand that's been chopping him this entire match. Just stomping on that hand. Crushing all the metal, the metal carpels in his hand. It'll make him much more difficult to grip anything and now he's targeting the other arm. What's he got here? Oh, he's looking for a Kamara lock. He's got locked in. He's gotten very close to the ropes but he knows that he's restricting him from reaching them. As you can see Max trying to reach for them but Dan is in the way of his path as he's got the Kimura tight on that one arm without the elbow pad. Now Max Harlton punching his way out. An act of desperation there and a forearm to the face of Dan Backslide. But Dan just not backing down as he just drives his elbow into his shoulder. Look at this arm wrenching move. Slamming him also on the back of his head and now he's going for a cross arm bar. Max is still close to the ropes, but Dan, master of positioning and restriction, 
making sure he doesn't reach the ropes, but Max Harlton still able to punch his way out as he's just clobbering him between the eyes. Now Max using the forearms and a big clothesline. But all that extra effort has exhausted Max Harlton. But Max still in firm control here as he turns him around. Big double axe handle and another. Big second wind from Max Alton with his signature comeback and a big hip splash into the corner. And follows up with a cannonball. Goes for the cover. One, two, no, Dan kicks out. After that flurry of hip maneuvers, Max Harlton is still in this match with Dan Backslide. Now look at this, he's looking for the Dreamer's Echo, and oh, look at this, look at that reversal by Dan Backslide. Sunset flip into a submission. I don't even know what to call this submission. What innovation by the veteran. Who says old dogs can't learn new tricks, but Max Halton is getting out of it with the knee strikes to the head. And Dan not backing down with that arm wrench there and just slaps him back down. He's dragging him into the middle of the ring. He's got a cross arm bar again. He's got wrenched really tight, bending that elbow back. Can Max Harlton get out of this? He is in a compromising position. Now he's getting out of it, but look at that. Dan backslide shifting his legs. So Max Harlton just incidentally put himself into a triangle hold. Dan backslide like a snake right now. Any movement just causes him to wrench tighter. But Max punching his way out yet again. Now, look at this. Oh, big DDT! He's going for the cover. Can he get the surprise victory? Yes, Max Harlton. Out of an act of desperation, getting out of the clutches of the coward bully cat and thief, Dan Backslide. That big DDT. I think he knocked out Max or Dan Backslide. Because Dan's still not moving. In any case, impressive victory from Max Harlton. Very, very good match. You gotta wonder if this puts him into title contendership for the interpromotional title. As he leaves the ring, Dan, Dan's still laid out in the ring. The crowd gives an applause to this amazing wrestler. Dan, I think we need a shovel to peel him off the mat. Because he's still not moving. Well, in any case, ladies and gentlemen, while we wait for Dan Backslide to be peeled off of the mat, I have word from Anthony Paul being talked to earlier in the night with Lido Deck, and Anthony Paul has told me to convey two announcements to you tonight. And one of those is that next episode concerning the Joe Diaz and Christian Maniac rivalry due to Chris Malenko ending their match in DQ Joe Diaz can find a tag team partner for next episode he can face faces of fear for revenge it's exciting to hear that as Joe Diaz was going to have an amazing match with Christian with Christian Maniac excuse me but Chris Malenko came to his aid. I'm glad to see that Joe Diaz can finally get his payback on that dastardly human being, dependent on if he can find a tag team partner. And the second announcement is concerning the Lido deck talking to Anthony Paul about Dead Zone. Anthony Paul has not disclosed to me exactly what he has talked about and why Dead Zone is so dangerous, but Anthony Paul is calling a state of emergency for PWR. And that is that Dead Zone has now been recognized as a considerable threat, not just to the world champion Rob Kamen, but to this entire promotion. And I don't know exactly what the reason is for that, but in any case, Anthony Paul has made it official 
that every match Dead Zone is going to have continuing to Thunderstruck will be for his number one contendership. And that includes the match that is about to happen right now. Let's take you to the ring for Mort Tamor versus Dead Zone. And this match has suddenly become for his number one contendership. Let's take you to the ring right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is one and a half of the tag team champions. The leader of D.I.E. Death is Eternal, Mort Tamor. And now we have informed the crowd that this match is now for Dead Zone's number one contendership. And when they are usually against Mort Tamor due to his dastardly deeds, they are well in support for him right now. As no one wants to see Dead Zone face Rob Kamen. We said that it is a danger to this entire promotion if Dead Zone wins the PWR World Champion. And that is because if he wins it, he'll just wreck havoc throughout this entire promotion. We're talking about injuring our entire roster and holding that championship for eternity. And we are trying our best to make sure that Dead Zone does not get anywhere near that championship match. Now I'm sure Rob came in as courageous as he is. He wants to face anybody. That includes Dead Zone. He won't back down from it. But Anthony Paul, according to his and our better judgment, we are going to try the best we can to find a different, equally as qualified opponent for Rob Kamen. And that starts here tonight with Mort Tamor. Now Mort Tamor, king of dastardly deeds, debuted in this promotion, screwing people over and getting the advantage in his own match to get victories over the likes of Gunner and Jared Jackson. Master of manipulation, manipulated Gunner and Jared Jackson so they had an easy victory for the World Tag Team Championships. And now they have that. However, Mort Tamor has gone on record to say he does not need Killian Walker at ringside for this match and you gotta wonder what is up Mort Tamor's sleeve tonight to go in the ring one-on-one -on -one with the definition of destruction dead zone. In any case, the crowd is already audibly behind Mort Tamor. Now when we usually hear terrifying silence when Dead Zone comes out, we hear booze raining down on him. And I can agree to that. Even though Dead Zone does put on tremendously entertaining matches, I do not like the idea of him holding our world championship. As he is an incredibly dangerous man. He can definitely hold a candle to the flame of the danger of Robert Martyr and Heraldry. Being 7'2", 450 pounds, and athletic enough to do a freaking suicide dive, as we saw on the last episode. The odds are all against him right now. It is Dead Zone versus the world, and we are the world. However, Dead Zone, I don't think he cares. I don't think he's capable of caring about anything. 
frankly. Oh, here we go. These two absolutely disgustingly terrifying human beings. If they even are human. More Tamehor already trying to get in the head of Dead Zone, but I don't think... Oh, it's possible to get through that thick skull. As he just chopped Dead Zone. That was not smart at all as Dead Zone is already angry. And oh my god! Big clothesline takes down Mort Tamor, and instead of going for the cover, he is just absolutely battering Mort Tamor. And oh god! All 450 pounds driven into him with that elbow drop. And oh, Mort Tamor stirring already, fighting back. Look at these slaps and back fists and. Dead Zone just fires back with a big hammer fist. Surprised he didn't knock off Mort Tamor's beak. Kick out from Mort Tamor. Tamor is the type of person who enjoys pain, which is why I think he has a little bit of an advantage against Dead Zone. As Dead Zone dishes out the most painful moves in wrestling history. Simply because of his absolute daunting size and power. Oh, look at this, another big punch from Dead Zone. Goes for the cover again. Mort Tamor still able to kick out. But Dead Zone is having absolutely none of it and he is staying on the much quicker opponent. Now, Tamor, by no means is he a short person, but he looks like an absolute child compared to this behemoth. Now, he's going for, oh, a big splash in the corner. Slaps him into the middle of the ring. He goes for the cover. And, oh, more Tamor still in this match. Oh, look at that big kick misses and drop kick to the back of Dead Zone puts him against the ropes. What's he doing with his arm and... Oh jeez, he's stabbing his beak into his forearm! Mort Tamor... Oh god, he just spit out the blood! Mort Tamor... I was questioning what he has... Up his sleeves... And apparently, it's just his beak! Now he's stunned Dead Zone a bit... As he's... Surmounting a comeback right now with that bulldog into the middle of the ring. Hyping himself up, beckoning Dead Zone to get up. Went for a big leaping clothesline until he stumbled Dead Zone. And again, and a, oh, calf kick knocks down Dead Zone. Goes for the cover. One kick out at one. Now Dead Zone has been in incredibly violent matches before. Most notably, his death match against Alexander Henry at Wild Card. But now, he's maybe looking at another violent match with Mort Tamor. As those flurry of kicks knocks Dead Zone into the corner, hits him with a big splash and a springboard elbow drop. Mort Tamor, an incredibly agile 6'5 competitor. Big double boot stop goes for the cover. And all oh, close kick out from Dead Zone. The crowd is absolutely ecstatic right now to see Mort Tamor get so much offense. Big neck snap onto Dead Zone. And now he's working the leg, making sure Dead Zone can't move. We saw a lot of this from Lido Deck at New Beginning, targeting mostly the legs and hitting the head when he can, but it seems like Mort Tamor can do the most damage no matter what. He's just making sure he is slower than he usually is. As he's wrenching on that knee brace covered leg. Now he's setting him up. Oh no no no. Oh god he just stabbed him in the scalp with his beak. That seems to be his main weapon of this match is his beak that seems to be surgically attached to his face. As he's just drived it four times into the forehead of Dead Zone. He's doing it three more times. It's like he's trying to murder the giant. This is like David and Goliath. And Mort Tamor is looking to be David, only way more violent. And oh god! 
That time the beak went more into his throat. Now Mortamor is going absolutely insane right now. Not to say that he isn't already. Now he's asking for Dead Zone to get up. What could he be looking for? Hurricane Rana maybe, but no, Dead Zone catches him and and oh my god! Tossing power bomb threw him onto the top turnbuckle. That's gotta be it, and no, more Tamor still kicks out. He just threw him head first onto the top of the turnbuckle. It's miraculous that he's not knocked out. Oh no, Dead Zone just releasing him with that power bomb. Goes for the cover. Of course, that's not his finisher. His finisher is a power bomb, but he likes to do a sit out last ride with all of his strength thrown into it. That was not all of his strength right there, so of course Mort Tamor was able to kick out. Of course, it is still a slim chance though as you're being thrown from about seven feet in the air. Oh, look at this pop-up maneuver and oh jeez! Oh my god! Holy crap! Mort Tamor just stabbed Dead Zone in the head so hard with the beak that there is now a gaping hole in his forehead and Mort Tamor is just going to work on that stabbing it even more with his beak what a sickening human being he's trying to commit murder on screen oh he's doing it again and again and again I mean if there's any way to put down dead zone I guess this is a way as you just heard that snap there, I think he just broke through skull. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Now he's going up to the top. I think, I think Mort Tamor figures it's time to just end this match already. Could Mort Tamor become the new number one contender for the world title? Carnival Corkscrew, that's his finisher. Go for the cover, Mort. One, two. Oh, oh my God. How is Dead Zone able to kick out yet alone breathe? This is just a sickeningly violent match. What could Mort Tamor be doing right now? I think Mort Tamor's getting it a little overzealous right now. Oh, oh no. Oh, that was a mistake. He just tore off the mask. Covering Dead Zone's face wound. And now they just stare at each other. I think Mort Tamor just realized he screwed up. Just this intense stare down. Oh no. Oh no. no, no. Oh. Holy crap! I an eye for an eye. More like a mask for a mask. As he just. He just punched him so hard he removed his beak. And now look at this. Sit out power bomb. That's his finisher. Dead zone. Just absolutely pissed off. Just. Oh my god. Three. I don't even care that Mort Tamor isn't the number one contender now. I'm just. I I'm glad this match just ended. Because I think we just witnessed attempted murder. But in case Dead Zone is victorious, he just punched off the beak from Mort Tamor, and I think he broke his nose as it's surgically attached to him. Oh, wait, Killian Walker! His opponent for next episode! Oh, jeez! Spiral death! Impressive strength from the big man of D.I.E. The muscle of the two. If Mort Tamor's up, I think this was a setup. Just so they can weaken Dead Zone. Oh yes, they they're looking for it. The guillotine! Guillotine execution. Their tag team finisher onto Dead Zone. Showing no remorse to the number one contender for the PWR World Championship. And now begs the question, 
in our Monsters Brawl match for the next episode, will Killian Walker be the new number one contender? Just, oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what I just witnessed. It's like I just re-watched the deathmatch Dead Zone had with Alexander Henry, but like, shorter. Ugh. That was disgusting. In any case, that aside, and Dead Zone's reign of terror aside, it's time for our main event. The show must go on. Wayne Watson versus Rob Kamen in a Proving Grounds match. Let's just let's just go to the ring right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've had a long and bizarre night. Everett Constantinelli making it official that he's facing Robert Martyr at Thunderstruck for the interpromotional title. Mort Tamor just tried to murder Dead Zone but came up unvictorious. But in any case, it's the main event of tonight. And I am excited to see this young man shine one half of the rebel society as you can see by the t-shirt he's wearing from ucw's pro wrestling tees store wayne watson i will support all promotions here in pwr wayne watson predominantly a tag team wrestler the longest tag team champions in ucw alongside big time jake However, his match against Kobe Jordan for the World Championship that he did not win, unfortunately, is what opened Anthony Paul's eyes up to Wayne Watson as a singles competitor, and he became incredibly invested in him and signed him here to PWR. And he thinks it's about high time he gave him a chance at another world title. And Rob Kamen can agree which is why he agreed to this Proving Grounds match system with his first opponent being Wayne Watson. Now, some people could look at this Proving Grounds match system as a sort of shortcut to the world title as if you can beat the world champion, you can basically skip everybody else who's in line for the contendership. As if Wayne Watson wins this match tonight, he gets to face Rob Kamen for that title next episode. I am very happy for Wayne to finally get this type of opportunity. This is sure to be a really good match. These two have very similar types of movesets. Both brawlers, both heavy hitters, like to use their fists a lot. Wayne Watson, in particular, undefeated in the world of mixed martial arts. So Rob Kamen has his work cut out tonight, but begs the question, will he lose in his first Proving Grounds match? As he's holding up that title, proud, incredibly proud and excited for him as much as I am. He's been an incredible world champion so far, already setting up this Proving Grounds opportunity for everybody else. Here we go as we get both men in the ring alongside the referee. The ref rings the bell and now we get a little stare down from Wayne Watson as you can see there is a significant size difference between these two Wayne considerably shorter than Rob Kamen however Wayne makes up with a lot of power to compensate for his height as we go into the collar elbow tie up yet again Rob Kamen about six foot three Wayne Watson, very short at about 5 foot 10. And 
Look at this impressive technical bout between these two as Rob came and gets the advantage in the collar elbow tie up situation. He's got him in a headlock and oh! Drives the knees into Wayne Watson. Kind of surprised that he gets the advantage against Wayne as Wayne, being undefeated in mixed martial arts, should be much more technical than him. Now look at this Irish whip back elbow by Wayne Watson takes down Rob Kamen, but not for long as Wayne goes to run the ropes and oh big shoulder block by Rob Kamen. A little bit of a show off running the ropes here between the two. Snap Mare and he takes him down goes for the pin early but he kicks out right before one. Not enough to do anything of the sort. And he picks him up. Rob Kamen responds back with his own Snap Mare and his own pin but Wayne still kicks out before one. A little, bit, a little bit of a back and forth between these two. Now look at this, he's going for a straight jacket working hold. But Wayne, way too fresh and energetic for that as he flips him out of it. And oh, big hip toss by Wayne Watson, driving Rob Kamen in the middle of the ring and he gets his own chin lock. But Rob came in equally as energetic and awake right now. And he gets out of it. The crowd cheering these two very evenly matched competitors. Oh, big slap from Wayne Watson. Show of disrespect from the younger wrestler. And oh, big right hook. Spinning kick to the gut. Rob Kamen, now Rob Kamen firing off with strikes over and over again. But Wayne, oh Wayne told him not to play his game. As he ends that strike with a forearm. Went for another slap but Rob Kamen reverses it and oh god. Big charged up right hook and now he's just raining down the punches to his face. Irish whip here and oh his own hip toss. Throwing the much smaller man way high in the air. He goes for the cover. Kick out right at two by Wayne Watson. Now he sits up Wayne. He gets him up. Puts him in the corner. And he's hyping up the crowd a little bit. Surprising to see how evenly matched these two are. Now Rob came in going with a signature stripe, strike combo in the corner of his. And continuing to stomp a mud hole in him. Now he turns him around. He's got him in a bullplex. Now Wayne Watson looking for something to support himself on. Now he's showing a little bit of getting winded. And speaking of getting winded, he drives the knees into Wayne Watson's gut twice. And falls up with a Russian leg sweep. Goes for the cover. Kick out at two from Wayne Watson. But Rob Kamen goes straight back into the straight jacket hold. And he's got nice and tight. Restricting the blood vessels and the air paths in his throat and driving the back with his knee. Really wrenching it on him. Wayne could be in a little bit of trouble, but Wayne still powering his way out. Look at this. Oh, God! Big clothesline. From out of nowhere, takes down Rob Kamen. But Rob still kicks out. The world champion still in this match. Remember, if Wayne wins, he gets the opportunity to face him for the title next episode. As he drives him down with that elbow. Now look at this. Just wearing down Rob Kamen. I think Wayne's had enough of playing around. Keeping wrist control as he just batters him in the face with his feet. With his expensive Adidas. And he wrenches on the wrist and oh, just drives his knees into his back. His unprotected knees too as I don't see any knee pads there. Wayne hyping up the crowd. 
And, oh, big clothesline. Another one. He ducks under his, and a super kick with his Adidas. Now he's picking him up. Irish whip off the ropes. And, oh, went for a suplex there. Now Rob came in looking for his own belly to belly, but he gets out of it. Wayne off the ropes. Oh, look at that twisting neck breaker. Very even technical bout between these two. And oh, he kicks out. Close fall for Wayne Watson there. Nice. Beckoning for him to get up, but Rob came in. Oh, be careful for what you ask for. And oh, big said time. Driving every bit of air out of Wayne Watson's lungs. Oh, but he still kicks out. Now he's getting him back up. Has him in a fireman's carry. Carrying him around like an absolute child. He does weigh significantly less than Rob came in and oh, snake eyes onto the ropes. Now he's got him in a cradle. And oh, just drives him and throws him around like a child. Look at this. Oh, another senton. But Rob Kamen's not done with that move as he does it again. Just using it to wear down Wayne at this point. To slow down his offense. And oh, misses the sliding clothesline there. And Wayne, oh God. Now that was just, that was just a straight up forearm to the face. Nothing fancy about that. All right, but oh, look at this. What, is he looking for a choke slam? Oh, look at this. Oh, impressive strength from the ever athletic Wayne Watson. Speaking of athletic, he's going up to the top now. And a, and a moonsaw. Bizarre combination of moves there as he goes for the cover. Kicked out by Rob Kamen. Wayne Watson just showing off there. Just a subtle flex to the crowd. And to Rob Kamen, and now he's just driving him down. With his superior ability in combat sports. And his technical bravado. Oh, jeez. Knocks him down with the double axe handle to the back of the head. And look at this. And oh, God. Just a straight up elbow to the collarbone. And now Wayne. One of the most athletic wrestlers in our promotion. Went going for a suicide dive. But Rob Kamen stops him with a forearm. And a, oh, headlock punch. Follows him up with, oh god, half and half suplex, nearly drives him on the back of his neck. Now look at this, big single leg drop kick, connects with his jaw. And, oh, kick out by Wayne Watson. Wayne Watson still in this match with Rob Kamen. He could still get his match for the world title next episode, DDT by Rob. And now Rob, going up to the top. We don't see this very often from him. He's beckoning for him to get up. Shrugging to the crowd. And oh, big leaping shoulder block tanks down. Wayne Watson goes for the cover. And oh no, Wayne Watson still kicks out. What does Rob Kamen have to do to the end this? And I think he knows exactly what he needs to do as he's surmounting a comeback. Double axe handle and another. Ducks under a clothesline and a big leaping clothesline takes down Rob Kamen. Or Wayne Watson rather, excuse me. Big shoulder block into the corner. Rob Kamen with a big drop kick to the face. Goes for the cover. Fluent motion. And no, it's still not enough to take down Wayne Watson. 
is sitting Rob K Wayne Watson up. Excuse me, Rob Kamen is sitting Wayne Watson up. He has him by the back of the neck. Now he's looking for bombs over Bricktown. Signature move. Still not enough to put away Wayne Watson. However, he's following up instantly. He's looking for the ego killer. Ego, no, he gets out of it. Neckbreaker takes down Rob Kamen. Now, Wayne Watson going up to the top. He's looking for a signature move of his, a frog splash. Now look at this. Wayne Watson going clutch as he takes him down with his finisher. One, two, look at that, Wayne Watson got the upset victory on our world champion. The first Proving Grounds match in a line of many, and Rob came in lost against Wade Watson. Now you've gotta be wondering what's going on in Rob Kamen's head. Could he lose the world championship next episode to Wayne Watson? Thank you for tuning in tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for backstage comments with Ethan Moda with some comments on his first victory in PWR. Thank you for tuning in. You guys are supposed to get Ethan Moda back here for backstage comments. But instead, you're getting me. A way better person. You know, I've been with PWR for a good couple months now. Um, I've been also dealing with back injuries. Um, and after that ladder match, it's gotten worse. So... After tonight, I'm taking the break I needed. I know everybody hates me, but you gotta respect me. I went to war in that ladder match, and God forbid, I should be at least awarded the interpromotional title match at Thunderstruck. But no. No, let's, let's give it to Orion James. Let's give it to, you know... Constanelli, or let's give it to Okami, or whoever, or Kiyoshima. No. It's my title. I deserve it. Nobody else here in PWR deserves it much as me. I've been here longer than anybody else. I'm a veteran of PWR. I am the god of PWR. Now... Excuse me while I go on my break. Thank you all. Fuck you all. Good night. You put me in a fucking headlock. I quit.